You are listening to SelfDiscoveryRadio.com with an orchard of wisdom just ready for your picking, filled with illuminating, inspiring stories. Do check out the community and the discovery stores. We are here for you. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to another edition of Channeling Ascensions. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, along with my other co-host, Christina Hill, and her divine angel, Athela. And our guest today is Les Jensen. Les Jensen has been here on the show with us um, a couple of times before, and his beautiful, infinite wisdom is always very exuberant. Um, he has a way of speaking and of uplifting and of... Um, of motivating, and he speaks deeply to your soul, your heart, and your spirit, and invites it to kind of step into life, into the love of life, and the new human way of living. So, uh, Les says today, he's actually the founder, by the way, of the new human living, which is a new way of living, the new way of looking at life and embracing life, um, which when you actually think about it, it's an old way that we are now newly embracing. It was the way we were always meant to live. And... Um, Les says today, let's ask, pray, the divine goddess within us, the feminine, to whisper a vision of heaven and earth, to ask the divine god masculine to show the incremental embodiment, thus the physical creation of it into form, to talk about the flow of creation as it starts as a consciousness, dreaming or visioning of a vibrational image of what will become form, and then begin still and the fl- on the flowing of the impulse of each moment as it comes into form from feminine to masculine. Balance, folks. Yin and yang. It's, that's what it's all about. Christina says, each and every moment of our day, we have a chance to hit the reset button. We do not leap into the future. There is no need to slide back into the past. We can decide to be attentive in real time with our divine nature, the universe, with this precious, infamable energy that we call now. To kick off 2018, make a major decision that will start living, uh, start you living more in the now. Your life will literally transform if you can sincerely embrace this kind of total radical acceptance, the healing that we are all seeking of ourselves, for loved ones, for communities, for our planet, it all begins within us. We honor our now, we are enlightening and raising the collective vibration for all. That is the way it is. Burst of love and light to you all from Christina and Othella. And my contribution today is this. As a resident of Earth and a, uh, a particle of the universe, we owe it to them and ourselves to step into our vibrational energy action and five ways in resolving the issues that we have created as mankind. We underestimate just how empowering we are and that when we choose, we can balance the masculine and feminine energy to bring out a more peaceful existence among us all. Well... The consistent theme here, folks, is about stepping into our now, stepping into action, understanding everything in life is balanced. It is both masculine and physical and feminine, and it is about embracing everything in life, not just one thing in life, but also make sure that it is based in the love and the value and the embodiment of each other. So... Wonderful way to start it off, folks, with beautiful words of wisdom there. And, um, you know, welcome back, Christina, my co-host here. And uh, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And thank you for that beautiful entryway into this. We're, we're creating the energy even before the words leave our lips. There's the energy there. And you've just shared that. And thank you, Les, for joining us as well. Mm-hmm. I feel the energy backed behind these words. Definitely. And uh, Les is a, a, a very passionate person, uh, filled with conviction. He doesn't just talk it, he lives it. And uh, mm-hmm. and you can tell by the, a, the way he speaks, but also when you follow him. You know, he's a, a, a motivator, a celebrator, um, you know, a, provoter, a promoter of this new human way of living. So, Les, how about you just kind of fill in a little bit and introduce yourself to people and tell them a little bit more about yourself? Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's, a, it's such a delight to be here. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about our human potential because there's so much desire, there's so much hunger in the heart of humanity for a change, for a new paradigm, for a new story, for our future. 
And the curious thing is, if you look at the mythology of our human culture, divine beings don't descend from the heavens as glowing orbs and wave some kind of a magical wand to change our human condition. It always takes flesh and bones. It takes flesh and bones to show up. Chances are pretty good you have flesh and bones. <laughs> and and so, so when you look at the hunger of humanity, that's raw opportunity. That's raw potential for the transformation of our human story, of our, uh, of our human evolution. And your heart and your soul know what it means to live a powerful, passionate life and to kind of engage that desire of humanity from a place of compassion in your heart and then to step into action with the passion, with the excitement, with the exuberance of how it feels to create a new story, to bring it from the idea into physical form that's just, it, it never gets tiring, it gets bigger and expands as you open more and more to it so mm. i'm i'm very excited about these next chapters of our human story mm. oh totally and christina and i'm most on board with that where because we really are in that stepping into now and that potential of you know for me that's this 2018 is all about the action it's all about what we're what what are we doing to step up what are we doing to make the changes we've we oh. know we've been shaken up and woken up it's the stepping up and 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 changing it up right now and you know as we're talking about human potential today is that i think as human beings we undersell ourselves all the time we forget how awesome we are how much we've created how much ability we have in this flesh and bones when we unite it with spirit and soul and heart and purpose you know it's we are such beautiful divine creatures we've got to stop selling ourselves short and set ourselves free and see what we can do because we're unlimited in what we can do when we unite everything together Christina, I know you're bursting. <laughs> I, I'm bursting. <laughs> and yet I am so present and attentive because the energy here right now is so electrifying. I, we can't put words to it, and we should not. No. Feel it. Feel it, folks. We're penetrating right into those bones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, that, that's really a big word too, yes, and to invite this energy into the cells because we, we integrate it into our cells and then we feel it and then we take it out into our day and it spreads and everyone around you feels it and it can be very centered, right? We can manage this energy, this electrifying energy. We can manage it very well. It can be very centered yet yet very electrifying at the same time. So, so I think it's important, too, to mention here we are making big leaps. This is a big, big year, big action year, and there are big leaps that are required as our consciousness expands. As we, as we draw up these beautiful stories, we, we, we want to really become the powerful creators that we are to the, to the utmost level. And I believe that also trust comes into play here where we we are expanding in our trust of universe and we can do all of that with a very centered calm like the roots of a tree going down and rooted and at the same time have that that bursting energy that 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 passion and the the electrifying energy that is required really for for the passion and the creative energy to come and to flow into the physical and, and I guess for, for me, when we're talking about action, I, I believe that that is the generator for the action. And, and we don't necessarily have to have, you know, we're not going to figure it all out. Othello tells people all the time, you're not going to know the how. And that's really not your domain. It's you step away, you, you lift it off, you, you reach out, you give it up to universe, and then you, you are free. You can relax into the knowing that that this story, the, the the creative palette that you have filled out is going to come into fruition and it's just going to be magic. And if we live in that way, we trust in that way every day, I, I just see 2018 as, as this big booming year of, of creation and action. So so life can look a lot, a lot uh, more expansive 
than the, in previous years, I think, just, yeah. just living in this way every single day. You know, before, well, Les, you come into that, I just, just have to, uh, to say this because uh, the image of what you were uh, presenting right now of the rooting is that maybe we should look at ourselves as the forest. And, you know, if you look at the forest, you can't see the forest for the trees, right? But what if we were each one of us, those trees? We know that all of those roots are a matrix. We're all connected to one another. Look how tall and how strong a tree lasts, you know, stands for sometimes a uh, hundred years. Uh, look how they how high they go, how their branches reach out, but how they are a community in each of the trees protecting one another. Look at what they bring to the forest, in the wisdom, in the energy, in the light, in the wonderment, in the mystery. You know, why can't we look upon ourselves as a beautifully rooted tree with our branches reaching out to, to the heavens, to the universe for the wisdom, with the matrix passing it down to one another and being support of one another and understand that you don't have to become part of a star to impart that wisdom and that love. Be part of the roots uh, and let your branches reach out because that is where... It all is, you know, just choose which tree you want to be in and which forest, right? Less sorry, I had to get that off my chest. Yeah, well, <laughs> indeed, when, when we look at what's going on in the world, a lot of times we can project this idea of it's broken in some way mm -hmm. or another. But in truth, our relationship with our ability to create is our relationship with all that has been created. Mm -hmm. And when we posture with one aspect of creation, we're literally setting up a karmic propensity to posture with our own potential. Nothing is broken. Nobody has broken a karmic law ever. We're mm -hmm. giving fierce freedom on this planet to create as we choose. And that's a really, really powerful thing. And a responsibility. So when, well, sure, but... You know, if you go through your day with virgin eyes, with with mm -hmm. uh, naked, empty eyes, and look mm -hmm. without bias or judgment, you'll see that there's love everywhere. Love is <laughs> is is the fabric of all that is. Yeah. And and so when you have an expectation of seeing new, seeing fresh, and and again you look with that that virgin. Uh, gaze, you, you start to notice that there's love behind every motivation that exists. We chose as souls to go into darkness so we could have the experience of a victim, of, a, of, of being, feeling powerless. So, and, and the bold thing about this planet, I suggest this planet is perhaps one of the most advanced classes of karma in the entire galaxy. Mm -hmm. We went to the very edge of darkness so we could have the journey back to the light and experience every single facet of love that exists. So to see all that is, and just as it is, with, without any projection of, of good or bad, frees us up to dream the most vivid and exquisite dream mm -hmm. and and know that our creative power can bring it into form. Yeah, you know, when you talk about good and bad, maybe we should change it to, is it serving? Is it productive? Um, you know, everybody has a different interpretation of what good and bad is. But mm -hmm. are you a contributor? Is this something that's serving mankind? Is it something that's productive, creative, invitive, you know, has a, has a reason behind it um, in serving mankind? And sometimes it is, it is sometimes, as you say, the, the negative that propels us forward to the positive. Um, and we need the darkness in order to understand the light. Or sometimes we need the darkness to see the light within the dark. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think this is one of the things we need to do is perhaps change the way we look at words or change the way we choose to speak our words. Um, mm -hmm. And that, I think, is one of the first steps forward, Christina. Absolutely. I there is just so much to, to really sink our teeth into here as, as I'm feeling the energy last, again, back behind your words. And, and also, Sarah, what you had just mentioned, um, we, we could go into so many different points. I, I feel like we are shifting, though. Th this, this can be said no matter what. This is certain, is that we are shifting now into a fifth dimensional self, a, a, a new dimensional 
consciousness. And as we step into that 5D, there's this non-duality that's being, we're beckoned to, to step into the non-duality. And, and that is going back to, less what you were saying so, so beautifully about us forming these labels with, and it's really ego. It's, it's, here we go back again with ego. Forming these labels about this is good, this is bad, and sort of that outlining of I'm looking at a tree and it's good or bad. And, and w- instead of perceiving the tree, instead of simply being there with, with the tree, we, we come up with stories about the tree. Um, and, and I think that's a, a very beautiful point that needs to be made here is the fresh eyes, the virgin eyes. We can choose to live in that freshness um, no matter what's going on in our material world. And that, that sometimes is called or referred to now as, as being in the present moment, living in the now. It's the perceiving before all the stories come in and it lights everything up. So if, if you're out and about, maybe you're listening to this in your car, you know, you're, you're looking in your material world, try this. It's like, try to look at something, anything. It could be, it could be a child. It could be your steering wheel, right? <laughs> and, and you're feeling it. You're not telling a story about it. You're simply there with it and feel it. You'll start to notice as you do that, there's life emanating backed behind the story before there's a, a concept there or a label and you'll notice your thoughts you'll notice you know oh there, there's thoughts that I'm having about it see if you can simply be there with it with as Les said fresh eyes virgin eyes because then then we do realize that everything begins with love this this energy of love and I do believe I, I'm also in complete agreement in the fierce freedom we, we have this awesome power mm-hmm. This creative, creative power, and sometimes I think we we just flat out forget. We just forget that we are actually creating it as we go along. We are creating our world, and so if there's something popping up for you that you don't like, it's like immediately draft up a new blueprint, draft up a new picture for yourself. New you know, direction. and then lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Redirect that energy. You can, and, and you're doing it. You're creating no matter what. So you're creating. That that never stops. It's just a continuous flow of creation. And I think we forget that, too. <laughs> I just think we forget. Yeah. I think this is why children are so, so much have come into their own right now. You know, it used to be children should be seen and not heard, you know. And now the children's voices have become those beautiful eyes to remind us what beauty we live in, how awesome we are, what love and kindness is all about, because we got so jaded as adults and so beaten up by all that's, you know, going wrong in the world that we forgot that we have the empowerment within us to put things right and that when we look at things through a child's eyes and the simplicity of it, it just simply is or it isn't. Well, what are you going to do about it? You know, uh, how about a hug? How about some love and kindness? You know, and when we look at through those children's eyes, I think we begin to see the beauty of life again, the honesty of life again, but also how simply um, it can be for us to step into that beautiful empowerment of now, of now and, mm-hmm. uh, and start a new life of new perception and um, new divine experience. Les? Indeed. The, uh, th- there's... Uh we're living in a field of miracles. <laughs> the, um, like uh, Christina said, that that um, we have this 5D um, consciousness that's coming into our human experience. Mm. And in, in that every time we go up an octave, the universe responds to us differently. And, and our egos tend to be an incremental progression of consciousness. And as such, the um, our our egos are not prepared to see the field of miracles. Mm-hmm. We we see from the past. We Ooh, have this yeah. this mental momentum from the past, mm-hmm. but in the present moment, in the now, um, is the the potential of miracles to manifest, and everything comes through. 
Are you with us, Les? Oh, oh, he is. He, he, he is. is. He's with us, yes, but is, is his voice with us? Somehow it's uh, just a <laughs> moment. I, I, this, is, this is what Les is talking about, yeah. actually, so it's perfect. <laughs> this is a perfect example. Yes. <laughs> I don't believe we should cut this from, from the show at all. Oh, no, we'll not do so at all. Yeah. And, and also, I, Les could come yeah. back to us any moment now. So, but how about you respond to what he's just said here, and we'll see if uh, we can get him back. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Responding to energy with energy. That's, that's what we'll do right here. I'd love to flow with this. He, he's, he's absolutely right. And these are universal truths. It's not um, my ego saying, oh, he's right. And I love what he just said. It's, it's a universal truth that we, we are often caught up in the, the, what is that little thing? You know, the little twirly, spinny thing that little hamsters run in? I'm not really yeah, sure the, what the name of it is. Yeah, the spinning, the spinning the wheel, spinning, yes. Yes, we're often caught up in that momentum from past, which clouds the now. And, and we may experience, when we do put a conscious effort into living more in the now, it can be for a few weeks, that moment or that movement of spinning around like, like the hamster in the wheel. And you can feel that energy, and it clouds the now, and it, it also goes away. With practice, with daily practice of being in the now and seeing with fresh eyes, you open up to the, to the energy field of now. And the more that we do this, the more of the, the light of consciousness, it just grows. And it, it will also do so many things for, for the body health, the health of the vehicle, uh, for, for your mind. You, you learn how to think in a very sharp, clear, crisp way, and and just lots of other benefits um, in your physical world too. It's like dropping out of the stories. There's no more labels. There's there's no accumulated past coming into your your current present world. And th- he's right. The miracles they they just fly from from all different directions when you choose to live this way. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm, hang on a sec, I'm good. Okay, folks, well, beautiful technology just dropped us there and we lost less, but less has been found. He is back with us. And, you know, this is a really good metaphor for life. Life sometimes drops um, and we've got to refine it. We've got to re-pick it back up again. It's just sometimes it's a redirect or sometimes it's just a slow down, pause, take in the moment before you continue on. And I think this is the one thing we've got to look at in life is that, if you, you know, have a fall, which I did again the other day, um, it isn't a kind of, oh, no, lay out and stay flattened. It's about, okay, maybe you're just meant to kind of chill out for a moment, take a step back, re- you know, re-look at life of where you're going because you're going down the wrong path. Um, or maybe you've got to wait for certain people to catch up so that you can journey along with them. Is that when you get life interrupters, do not let it stop you in your tracks it's purely a pause you can reconnect again so les i'm glad we got you back glad to be here (laughs) now don't go anymore don't disappear anymore on us Um, so we, yeah, we have a different flow going on right now, but that is okay because again, how about we dress those redirections that we get in life? You know, you can look at a a new year as a redirection, you know, um, what happened in 2017 that didn't work for you that you don't want to repeat and well, how are you going to change that attitude, that perception, that action this year in order to kind of paint the canvas of what you would desire this year to be. Now, remember, it's not paint by numbers, so it's not a manual on what each step to take. But how about that vision board of what you would like to achieve in 2018 um, by stepping into your momentary now to, you know, to fulfill that vision? Any thoughts to that, Les? Well, indeed. I think to expand our expectation of what we're capable of, as we've been talking about when we move into 5D, we move into a completely different um, paradigm or relationship, if you will, with the art of creation and the universe as a whole. So to incrementally grow your belief system, expand it, to incrementally expand your expectation for your life because every single one of us are very, very powerful personifications of the divine creative energy of all that is. Mm-hmm. And so to, to I mean, 
to just expect a bigger and bigger paradigm, a bigger and bigger relationship, a bigger and bigger outcome of who you are as a as a um, human being playing out in this lifetime, in this story, in this paradigm, when you can have a vision that transcends the collective story, you are the point of presence that brings a, a new possibility to all of humanity. And that's, that's, a, that's very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. Oh, powerful. Is the, there's that word again, powerful. I agree with Sarah, something you said earlier about a new language. Mm-hmm. As we go into 5D... There are no words in the human language that yep. can even come close to what we are trying to describe. Yeah. So there is a new language, and I have been very fortunate to have met with a few individuals, and I believe, um, Les, Sarah, I think that both of you are in this circle of conscious speak, or, gosh, we can't even put a word to that, but a new <laughs> language that is more um, de- descriptive of how powerful we are and that it comes through our voice, our, our language, and, and it's sufficient. It's, it's like it's sufficient enough to, to shine the light of our awareness, to, to bring consciousness to our language. What I guess I'm saying is we remove these, these ifs. We remove mm-hmm. the, the buts and, and, and we move into more aware, conscious language. And then we're, st- we're starting to speak in present tense we're starting to see that our as it comes through the lips our words are extremely powerful and we'll we'll find ourselves in conversation where we will redirect um, people as they're as they're creating because of course the creation process is always flowing as they're creating things that perhaps they don't want we can be a springboard for them we can help to redirect their their energy and put it in a language that is creative and that is positive and that is really what they want. Most people that are, I think, still in the, the in the third dimension, crossing into that fourth dimension, kind of in that fuzzy gray area, I, I believe some of these people are still caught in the, the web of what I don't want. Here, let me tell you a story about what I don't want. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna complain about what I don't want. These are my these are the things, this is a list of what ails me, and I, I, want, you, I want you to participate in, in, in this energy with me. So I think it's, it's as, as we are light workers, as we are moving into 5D, is, is that responsibility, w- what we were talking about earlier, the responsibility of uh, our, our fellow human beings, and to, to be of service is, is to bring in your full awareness, your full presence in these communications with with our loved ones and with with even total strangers and help them help them to to really get clear on what it is they wish to create and then to learn how to speak it um i I hope i'm making sense here again i I really i fumble with the words because we we are using language athelis says that we're going to come to a point where we don't speak at all there's no language needed there's it's a a type of telepathy really yeah (laughs) Well, it's also been looking at the words. I mean, all the way through that, all I wanted to go was supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And it's, you know, it's sometimes we just have to use some beautiful, extraordinary words just because they express the way we feel because there isn't any other word to do it. Mm. And, it, you know, and it's, I've always been told I make up words. And it's, uh, well, you know, obviously that word is is there because it wants to come out. It wants to express itself. It doesn't need to be defined. It's an expression of the moment. And why can't we find words? You know, we, we can burst into song. We can burst into dance. Why can't we burst into words <laughs> that just <laughs> come rolling off our tongue <laughs> that have no rhyme or reason, but they feel so good at the time that you say them? <laughs> yes. Mm. Les, have you got any particular words that you like, that you favor, that really empower you, that uplift you or express the way you feel? Sovereignty. Mm. My pers- my, oh. my personal sovereignty is also divine sovereignty. We're, we are the creators incarnate. We don't need permission whatsoever. We mm. are here to manifest yes. as divine incarnation. So my personal sovereignty to 
to trust that the vision my heart and my soul is showing me is already pre-vetted by the universe. Mm-hmm. I have the sovereignty to show up as a powerful person. And also the, the word dominion. I have dominion over my condition. I have dominion over my environment. Mm-hmm. I have dominion over my presence in this collective story. And it's just fine for me to show up in really powerful ways. I'm here to kick divine ass with Mm. love, with compassion, with with passion. And all of that is pre-vetted. So often I think when we come up through the academic systems, Mm -hmm. we're we're put in our place, so to speak, where we have these, quote, roles. And and I'm no crocodilologist. But in, <laughs> yeah. in the <laughs> in, see in, what I said about those di- words <laughs> in, in the divine scheme of things, we've always had dominion. We've all always had sovereignty to show up as when when people pray for a new outcome. Again, it's flesh and bones that show up to bring it about. So yes. when you get when your heart and your soul show you this big ass vision for your life. That's the stuff. That's the Kool-Aid. That's the elixir that'll make your ego be jumping on the bed excited about fulfilling the vision of your life, of your dream. The exuberance of life. And the thing is, when you step into purpose, you know, meaningful purpose, when you know you become a contributor, you've made someone's day. It's simple as walking down the street and saying hello and putting a smile on someone's face. You know, when we really are stepping into that light and that exuberance of life, life mm-hmm. begets life. Joy begets joy. Exuberance begets exuberance. Be what you want to receive in life. Step into your own light and be that beacon for others. It's, mm-hmm. it's about the flesh and bones and stepping into that beautiful gift that we've been given of the body and the embodiment that lies within. Christina. Oh, I'm absorbing. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm... <laughs> it's been it's spiked. A, it's been spiked. It's a good batch this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we've put something in it. <laughs> To give it some zing. Exactly. Oh, Ring a ding ding. Yeah. But I, I, I hope that every, I know everyone is feeling this. I can feel our listeners right now. And I feel that they're sharing in this collective Kool Aid is the best. It's just <laughs> the mm. best. Thank you both. I, I want to just share my gratitude because that, that is, it's, as I said in the beginning, it's electrifying. And the, the, the dominion, the, the fact that we are these powerful, awesome creators and that we are here to create. To, to some people, at first blush, it's, that's going to seem like, it, it could even sound self-serving. It, it could even sound like that's all me, 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 and ego-driven. And it's not. Mm-hmm. We are literally here to have fun and, like Othello says, to be like the dolphins. If you have not seen a dolphin, go, go on YouTube and, and listen to the sounds of dolphins. Yeah. Watch them. I mean, study them. We, we know that they're smarter than humans. And, and there are things that dolphins do that Othello says that, that they're the teachers and they're, they're here to show us how we can live. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, what do dolphins have to do with, with me? Everything. I mean, they're, they're awesome at what they do and they know they know how to play they know how to breathe they know how to glide and they they speak language and then they they communicate using the sophisticated I mean they had sophisticated equipment in there and they know how to be and there's just they they emanate joy so so go on YouTube see if you can see some some dolphins listen to their sounds and realize that you are here to do the very same thing You're here to play, to have fun, to create, to have the things, the forms that you want. That doesn't mean that you are the forms because your your eternal energy, your your awareness, your source. But we're here to enjoy the forms. I mean, that's that's the point. We're not here to struggle. I I think some people are are still kind of thinking in that way. We're Life is hard or, you know, oh, there's these certain roles, as Les was mentioning. There's these things that I must do. And it's like we can let go of all of that. You can. And, and 
if you need a little bit of assistance seeing what that looks like, here is your inspiration. I mean, you're listening to this right now. You've got animals, you know, the dolphins is just one example. And we have many, many quote unquote teachers, and I'm very careful to use that word, but teachers that are coming up on the planet. You have in the, in the non-physical um, beings such as Othella and, and Pleiadians, you know, our intergalactic friends, our guides that can show us what it looks like and feels like to step into this total awesome creative being that we are and to just to just let it be to to flow with that and to adopt that and i think on a day-to-day basis if we're getting you know more practical what that looks like it is it's it's a lot of fun it's going to feel like your life is flowing really well it's you're you're you have these big visions and you're creating the visioneering boards you're you know, and you're not letting the ego fear shadow right. rule your, your, your day-to-day life, you know. Les has a radio show as well, which I've been, had the privilege of being on. And Les, we've, we've both interviewed some awesome people doing some wonderful things. But one of the things I see a great deal of nowadays is a lot of, you know, psychotherapists or psychiatrists or uh, trauma-based um, coaches, etc., completely and utterly changing their approach to healing. And, you know, as one person said, it's not about, uh, you know, psych. Um, uh, psychiatry it's about sacred uh, sac- um, what you call it sacral therapy it's about bracing the sacredness within us it's understanding that if you're wanting to address the mind you need to speak to the soul the heart and the spirit to understand what's going on in the mind and i'm sure you've interviewed a lot of people that are looking at life at a totally different approach to the healing method and the guiding those souls forward mm. well certainly it's uh you know, none of us had an ego when we were born. We were <laughs> we were empty, mm. and and our or a our bundle of fam- joy, <laughs> and and our our family of origin taught us what symbols were, and then they taught what this taught us what the symbols meant, and then perhaps more, as important, the value of symbols, mm. and and so our ego can get into this. Um, um, freight train sort of uh, dialogue in our day to day life, in the sense that well, I'm experiencing life. I I have these day in and day out experiences. Therefore, life is this way. But mm-hmm. at the core of our being is is an unbiased, undefined light of divine consciousness, and it can play out any archetype or role that that exists in the field of infinite potential. So when, 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 we go, when we go into story about our past, it's just that. It's a story. It's a repetitive, habitual mm. pattern that we get into. Mm. And the minute we let go of it, it lets go of us because it yeah. has no motivation of its own. Right. And and like like you said, my guests are coming into that where it, it's no longer, you know, Park your ass on the couch because I yeah. need a new boat. Let's let's see if we can stretch this over a couple of years. It's like get over your shit, stand up, and kick some ass. Exactly, you know? yes. exactly. And it's like the yeah. power is within you. Stop looking outside to all your problems and understand the solutions lie within you. Embrace all your beautiful divine emotions because each one of them is there for a reason. But don't get stuck in them. Move the needle. <laughs> right. it's, it's, like, it's like standing in the back of a boat pointing at the wake of the boat and you're mm. pointing at the wake of where the boat has been mm. and nobody's driving the flipping boat <laughs> yeah. your yes. consciousness or, is seeing, the creative... or seeing the iceberg ahead of you <laughs> yes, indeed. your consciousness is the flipping steering wheel of your life yes. and so so be uh, learn how to be disciplined with it to focus on what you want to happen yeah. Again, that, that is a word that I, I'm so happy you used that word, Les. Discipline. Mm-hmm. That word. Because we, we, we have different body reactions. You say that word to a, a group of people, every, one, every single one of them is going to have a different body reaction to that word. Sure. And I believe that the discipline is the only thing that stands in our way often for retraining ourselves training ourselves this is this is kind of like boot camp for the brain to 
reset. to intentionally. It's the reset button, coming to the now, dropping out of the story of the past, leaving the ego shadow, whatever you want to call that, but that we're not focused in on or energizing the energy of the past. I like to call that the frosted flakes of ego because ego loves that. <laughs> ego will eat that up all day long, every day for all of your life. Is like, num, 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 num. I'm going to chew on the past me and what happened. And, and it's, it's got a quality to it that's, that's actually a lot like eating you know, you're, you're eating this, this furious amount of cereal and it's like sugar and you're like, gah, 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 gah. so the, the ego has that quality to it. And you'll find this is when you, let's just say, go off to retreat or go up on a mountaintop for a while and you disconnect from past, you'll find that even as you've done that, you're still getting a little bit of that momentum. You're still, your mind still, the ego wants to go back to that. So if you're in the habit of day-to-day living in the past or what has happened or trauma and, and, and there's nothing bad about that. It's not good or bad. It just is. You'll find that through disciplined practice of being conscious, you can just pay attention to the fact that your thoughts are engrossed in what has happened in the past. And that alone will start to create the dissolving. It, it, it will, as Les, you, you just said this marvelously, is as you let go, it let go. It, it will yes. let go of you. And, and that will happen through discipline. I'm so happy that we brought this word into the conversation. Um, keep it up, people. Let's, you know, keep the momentum. Find what works for you. I have one client who takes a, a rubber band and snaps it. I, yes. I'm not saying that's right for everyone. That may be kind of old school. But, yeah, but it works. But if, if it works, <laughs> yes. find, find what is going to help you to come back to here and now. I want to use, yeah, and and I just say, you know, I want to encourage people to use what works for them to come back to the current moment, to what's real. It it takes eight positives to undo one negative, which you can be eight gratitude. So if you are going to come up with a negative thought, you've then got to consciously look to eight reasons to step into joy, eight positives that are around you or gratitudes. The more you do that, the more you're actually resetting the brain to look for the, the positive, the outlook, the joy, the, the what can be, you know, what you can make it be rather than constantly falling back on that old patterning of, oh, I can't, it won't happen, it's not for me. It's change not only your vibration but change your musical instrument and understand that in order to change that patterning, that you're there, you have actually got to reset the dialogue, reset the vibration, and you're going to have to do that repetitively, disciplinedly, until the new dialogue is set. And that's what comes out of your mouth. And that's what the, where the um, anticipation of what can be when you step into it starts taking presence because your dialogue is changing. Les, you must have seen this a lot. Well, certainly. And the, the curious thing about it is how how the potentials of your life expand as you, uh, uh, with discipline, focus on potential, focus Mm -hmm. on the act of creation. In our our mythology, um, it pretty much sucks giving us models of what our true potential is because Jesus didn't have YouTube. Mary Magdalene (laughs) didn't have Twitter. And... And and so you're a personification of of Christ consciousness, and you're living in such a rich, rich environment of potentials. All it needs is flesh and bones to walk up and, and draw in that vision from the divine feminine. You ask divine feminine, what the hell can I do to kick some divine ass on this beautiful planet? And she whispers in your ears such a vast and magnificent dream of your life. Well, that's the thing right there. Yeah. So, so there's incremental expansion of trust that the ego gets as you choose the more positive thoughts, as you choose the conscious creation um, intentions as you go throughout your day. There's an incremental expansion that happens, and over time, that affords you to embody a bigger and bigger idea of where your life can go, and your ego feels ecstatic as your life keeps expanding. 
That's the thing, the energy begets energy, doesn't it? That's the whole thing. When you step into that exuberance of joy, when you start seeing the beauty of life, when you start feeling life from the inside out, allowing your your beautiful divine soul to resonate with your heart, to lift your spirit, to let your mind know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. When you choose to embrace all that beauty, even amongst the ugliness, you are, are now resonating out a vibration that is is so beautiful and invitational that you can see the beauty in everything, in everyone, and they start beginning to see it in themselves. So stepping into that just grows on itself, doesn't it? Oh, indeed. And there's no end to it. No. Ever, 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 ever. Oh, look, here's another now. Damn it, here's another now. Where did my now go? Oh, here's another I've got one. a dozen nows. <laughs> in this now moment, it's an opportunity for a new idea. Yes. In this now moment, it's an opportunity for a new vector, a new paradigm. We are we are an eternal point of presence of, of new opportunities. And if that doesn't get you excited, you need to think about what creation can afford you, what can what uh, your life can turn into when you truly honor what you prefer, what you enjoy, what gets you excited, what gets you passionate. To to live a passionate, exciting life, damn, I want I want that. I I'm not going to look anywhere else anymore. My inside has this inter- eternal well of inspiration that's handcrafted just for me. Shit, that's a beautiful, magnificent thing. Yes. And, and and I'm locked on to it. I'm not letting go for anyone. And you're going to honor and, it, too. Honor the gift that you've been given. Oh, I love myself too much to do anything else. Exactly. Oh, but self-love. Again, we're going back to the ego. Oh, it's egotistical to love yourself. You know, loving yourself at the expense of others. No. But loving yourself to become the light that shines upon others please love yourself to bits and shine bright because when you step into that love of who you are why you are what you're doing your purpose your joy your life you just shine so bright on other people that they just get excited to see what's within them that all of a sudden there's a light bulb going off inside of them there's a glow i haven't seen you before what are you you're right you you are you are the company you keep so set yourself mm. around somebody that is light and find that light bulb that's within you, that that amber, that that beautiful essence of light that is wanting to shed light on your own darkness and, and obliterate it. But put yourself around the people that are living in the joy of life. It will rub off on you. <laughs> I comment. Ah, oh, we have a fella here. And us. have music to share. The quality of music will lift you up. Take Escalator up by listening to music. You make the music. You can do it with vocal cords. Rejoice with those who are vibrating in your vibration. Turn away from those who are not making the music that is in this vibration. It does not mean you negate others. It does not mean you reject others, but that you do not lower your frequency to others. Uphold the vibration and do it with your soul. Well, thank you, Adela. Yes, that was wonderful. She just jumped in this time. Wonderful. I'm sorry. I think, <laughs> no, I think that's it was wonderful. Long, long overdue. I, I love holding the space just so Adela can be present, though. And there for a while, I hope you don't mind. I, I wasn't wasn't engaging, just, just being present and just holding the this, this no. sacred space for I us. I love the fact that she just jumps in when she's ready, and that's perfectly okay with me. And Very thank nice. you. Thank and, you. And, mm. and the end of the wisdom, you know, it's... You know, being present in our now, being present with ourselves, is that we have no idea what is our next moment is going to be. You know, because it's what we do in this moment that will define what the next moment is. And sometimes you have no control over what the next moment is going to be. Uh, but how you react to that moment is where your control is. 
And absolutely, right? Yes, you got lemons, make lemonade. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to say with with both with both Sarah and Les, I feel like this journey here this morning has been taking taking launch pad, getting up there, mm. and then igniting ignition and rocket ship launching and up we go and it's like Othello says up 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 and up and we are capable we are endowed we we have this this blessed gift within us and that's why we're here so we can at any moment it's a new moment the now will never betray you it's like the now is the reset button so we can come back to the now and we can hit that reset button we can begin fresh. It really doesn't matter what you thought a week ago. It doesn't matter the kind of thoughts that you used to energize or entertain last year. Maybe you want to write that contrast down and notice it for a moment or two so that, so that it's, it's something that you're aware of. But then you don't need to go back to it continuously. You can actually start new now. I want to just say that to people. Like It is possible to begin your creation and to go up with that rocket ship at any moment. Don't forget that. Remember that. Yeah. We can begin new, fresh in the now. There's a great movie. If anyone is, is into movies, um, you, you see it uh, in this movie. I've never seen it in any other movie. It's, it's kind of funny. It's a funny name. It's called Spaceballs. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. but in, the, in this movie, there is this scene. I want everyone to please go on the internet and see this. It's uh, this scene where... They're looking at the now. In this scene, they're actually watching themselves on a screen in the now moment. And the, uh, the second hand or the, the second commander is talking to the captain, and the captain's like, what are we looking at? And the, his assistant says, we're at now now, sir. This is the now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the coolest darn thing. It makes me laugh. And, and he's like, well, what happened to then? <laughs> and he's like, well, and he's like, well, we passed then, and and his the captain's like, well, when? And he said, just now. <laughs> and and they, they they go back and forth. It's so funny. It's a great visual representation. And as human beings, we are visual creatures. Go and see that. It'll remind you that we're actually at now. There's never ever going to be a time other than now. And now is where it's at. Yes. Now, now. <laughs> Well, well, now's the only time we can ever experience heaven or hell. Uh, so often the, the religious dogma says, well, no, heaven's in the future, or or we yes. got to jump through hoops to deserve heaven. No, heaven's intended for today. Heaven exists right now at the core of our being. The kingdom of heaven is within. And, and the way you experience heaven is to embody unconditional love for all that is, as it is. So in this now is the opportunity for uh, a taboo word of salvation, like like mm. we're not ever going to be divine. Mm. It, it's in this now that heaven is intended to be experienced today. Yes. Mm. You know something that's very uplifting? Um, my sister knows what I do, but she doesn't quite get what I do because we're totally on totally different planes. But somebody sent her something that the Pope recently wrote. And she said, when she read it, she said, this is you. This is completely what I believe you're doing. I just want to read the first paragraph because I do have it here. And I'm actually going to put the link on the show page. But it is under my blog here on selfdiscoveryradio.com. And it's the Pope's speech. And it says... You can have flaws, be anxious, even be angry, but do not forget that your life is the greatest enterprise in the world. Only you can stop it from going bust. Many appreciate you, admire you, and love you. Remember that to be happy is not to have a sky without a storm, a road without accidents, work without fatigue, relationships without disappointments. To be happy is to find strength in forgiveness, hope in battles. Security in the stage of fear, love in discord. It is not only to enjoy the smile, but also to reflect on the sadness. It is not only to celebrate the successes, but to 
to learn lessons from those successes, but to learn lessons from the failures. It's not only to feel happy without the with, with the applause, but to be happy in anonymity. Being happy is not a fatality or a destiny, but an achievement for those who can travel within themselves. To be happy is to stop feeling like a victim and become your destiny's author. It is to cross deserts yet to be able to find an oasis in the depths of our soul. It is to thank God every morning for the miracle of life. And he goes on. There's more there. And I mean, it is so wonderful to actually have a Pope that really is what I call a New Age Pope. He is really Ooh. in the now. He really is mm. connected to us now. It's And, you know, one another statement that he said a while ago, I don't care what faith you are as long as it's based in love and kindness. And bottom mm. line, that's what it should be about. But such really beautiful, profound words here that um, that is a reminder that you're going back to what you said earlier, Les, you know, the feminine the ne- and the masculine, you know, the positive and the negative. Everything has to have that balance in order to make sense in our now. Oh, indeed. And a lot of times our egos can develop an attitude that we're going to break something, that if we don't do something right, it's all going to mm-hmm. be like a house of cards. Yes. But... <laughs> But but these these flipping nows are eternal. I mean, you better get a storage unit or something to put them all in because they're, they're not going to stop. And and no. what I'm getting at here is is trusting the continuity of life. And what I love as an example of that is a flower. A flower doesn't give a rat's ass about the next moment or tomorrow or next week. It is totally present and at ease, at peace, because it trusts the continuity of life. And your point of presence, the consciousness that is illuminating your persona, is eternal. You can't break it if you want to. And no mortal intention can touch the truth of who you are. You are safe. You're completely and totally safe in this now and every now for eternity. So... For our egos to chill and relax and let go, kind of like throw the reins down on the galloping horses, to just surrender and let go and say, it won't break. I can't break my divinity. I can't break my consciousness. It transcends my ego. It Mm. transcends my fears. I am safe. I am safe in this moment. And when your ego can trust that, then you can live in peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm really swelling up with tears here and tears of joy and also just tears of knowing because I know and I've lived that and Les, that's just beautifully said and I love the metaphor too of of letting go of the reins of the horses and that safety, security, not just, I mean, maybe we're talking, we're talking about beautiful flower, but let's talk even for a moment about financial security, the, these, the, the safety of our, our body vehicle, because we, of course, know one day we'll have to eject and get out of our car, out of our vehicle, that safety there, that sense of security and knowing and trusting. And, and the trust is, I agree completely, in nature we see it. There, there is, there's no strain, there's no fear. And, and as I'm going to point to Eckhart Tolle, he's a dear friend. He said this about the flower, going back to the flower. The flower simply dies. When, it, when it's time for it to, yes. to transcend its form, and it shifts, because nothing ever really dies, it changes, it simply does that, and, and it's not a problem. It doesn't have a problem there. There's no problem involved. There's no ego story. Thus, you don't see any fear. You don't see any tremble. It is... It's, it's just the best to go out into nature, which is why we should, a fellow says, go outside every day, leave the electronics, put them away, go outside every day, because we learn to do this, to, this being, this trusting, we see it in nature, uh, more so than when, when we're, you know, with the electronics and when we're in our, our digital stuff. I believe that this trust, it emanates from the plants, the animals, we begin to feel that and then we learn that we are safe and we we can relax. We can relax. We are relaxed in life. We lay back, lay lay our head on the pillow of life. Oh, yeah. 
you know the thing is when you look at a barren land you know like the winter has has this, there's nothing it's just dry and brittle and and dead and then all of a sudden you haven't been there for a while you come back another week and all of a sudden you're seeing everything grow everything become mm-hmm. green again and there's very little land. I mean, obviously, there's some that we've scorched to a point that it's going to be 100 years before it comes back. But we, this beautiful planet of ours, knows how to rejuvenate, to relive, to to ascend and, and come back in another form or in the same form. But it's such a beautiful gift. You know, we are so scared to pass over. To, to ascend into life and it's this is just a vessel that we're in you know the mm. flesh and the bones as you say less we're here to have this physical experience this beautiful divine physical experience but our beautiful divineness goes on and becomes something else or is reborn but we never lose ourselves and I think we mm. lose ourselves more in our humanity or our lack of than we do actually you know, ever in our divinity less well, indeed, and what I find so delightful is that the divine desire for us shows up as our own desire. God, goddess, doesn't have this template of what we quote should be doing. There's mm-hmm. none of that. Mm-hmm. It, it's an eternal storyline, and and yes, divinity has desire, but it comes through you as you mm-hmm. your your desire is divinity desire mm-hmm. your desire is the portal of divine desire coming into form coming into to the physical realm and so your desires are no mistake right. even your your ego has to come to terms with what it desires what it prefers and what it doesn't and the only way you do that is by engaging in the experience so there's no wrong experience every single experience that we choose tells us something about ourselves and as we hone that over time we come into our authentic desires and that's the desires that our heart and our soul have in mind for our life and our ego desires when they start moving into alignment with our heart and our soul's desires then we we come into the energetic space of pure authenticity of ourselves mm. and and when you're purely authentic to yourselves your desire is is god goddess giving you the idea of what would make you feel rapturous mm. ecstatic about being you in this physical form mm. Mm. being ecstatic oh. about being you that is a concept that we need to embrace, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes. I, and to be on, I think what we're saying here is being on fire for life, for yourself, feeling that that fire, that electricity. And and the, the divinity within, it, it shines through from within to without, to the outpouring picturing of what we're seeing in our life canvas. And I believe, as Les, you, you were saying this so well, it's a journey and then the the, the congruency of, of the ego self. There's, there's no need to look upon ego to say it's bad or good, but to simply the integration and the intelligence there of the integration of, of ego desires, balancing that with, with heart, soul, you know, our, our mind, our, our body vehicle, and all of it just coming into to an alignment, to congruency, I think that's where we start to see our, our authentic selves coming forward to the forefront. And then it's funny, what happens when that happens is, is life provides opportunities and, and it just works out, you know, magically. It's, it's, there's another word, ma- magic, like yes. magic. But life has this great design too, is as you get more congruent and up, upright, in alignment, then the... The pictures that you're you're seeing and that what life presents, I believe, becomes it's just more fluid, it, and you feel, I think, more more and more these days like an artist, and and that you're you're enjoying the symphony, you're you're painting, you're creating, you're as Othello says, you're singing your song, and you deserve all of it. You, you're it is you, you are it, and it is you, and you're part of it all. Um, and there's no need for you. Sure, everyone has a bad day, but there's no need for you to to feel any less than that. And there's the should-haves 
are they have no place in any of this. So they there's no then, there's no yeah the exactly yeah no limits and and limitless and pierce pierce the old paradigms and you you're doing it now as you're listening to you would not be listening to this if you weren't ready then to pierce through these old paradigms to 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 really create and expand and. I'm so grateful that we have these platforms now of these conscious speak platforms on these radio shows and others so that we can join and unite in this collective energy and create together. Yeah. What fun. But you know, oh. There's the word creation, which I know a lot of people say, but I'm not a creator. I'm not a creative person. I'm, I can't draw. I can't do this. I can't do that. Is that every single one of us is a creator of something every single one of us can step into creativity it's uh, i don't care if you're just packing boxes you can do it in a in a beautiful style you are the creation you know you are the paintbrush you know let life be your canvas let people be your canvas and step into your own creativity of your contribution to life your 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 presence of being and understand that that is the stroke that um, that you're given to give. Mm-hmm. It's not about creating a piece of art. You are the piece of our art. And mm-hmm. that is that creativeness. And so it, do not sell yourself short. Do not believe that you don't count or you're not important because you're here because you are important. It is, you just mm-hmm. need to find that that gift that is within you. And and share it, share it out with everyone. Les, I know that you're on a time uh, limit here. Do we have a little more time with you? Let's do it. Oh, good. I'm so happy and glad you're not having to rush off anywhere. Okay, let's take that word creativity to, because you've used it a great deal, Les. What's your approach and how we can step into our own creativity? Get out of get out of your head. Yes, amen. And awaken the inner child. Mm. Go. Mm. Go splash in mud puddles and <laughs> stick your fingers in the mud and feel it ooze between your fingers. Mm-hmm. Get into the sensory aspect of life. Mm-hmm. The, the the ego is a pattern processor. It, yeah. it The ego weighs everything with the past. It judges everything based on the past. And when we get in, out of our head and, and we create opportunities for our inner child to, to gain more ground in our consciousness... When we learn how to play without uh, a goal or an intention, but just play in the moment, then we start to um, go loosey-goosey so new ideas and new inspirations can be recognized in our consciousness. If we spend the entire time in our mind, every single thought is a momentum of our ego. But to get out of our uh, ego and move into just the um, goalless, unintentional play of a child without without an agenda, then our our inner inspiration has a much broader canvas to show up in the moment and show us new possibilities. Uh, so often we can be hesitant when our soul shows us some big ass idea like we don't deserve it or it doesn't belong to us. It, when you play with something that has no consequence, where there's no um, consequence associated with it, you feel safer. And so that inner child to, to just flat out play, you're done with your meal and you didn't finish it all, well, make a castle out of the potatoes and then, <laughs> and then a moat out of the gravy and then the peas come right up like horses. Get the hell out of your head. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Oh, I, I can. I feel. I feel. I'm. I'm. I'm just obligated, compelled to say this. Some. Some people. I can hear this from some of my own clients that I see. Is is the statement or the phrase? I don't know how to do that. Les, mm. I don't know how to play. I don't know. And. And I to them Go find I, a I kid think, or a dog. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do what you must. Do what you think is gonna take you there. If it's been a long time for you, you know, don't no judgment. There's no need for that. Don't feel bad about it. It may take you, you know, a, a little a few times, a little while, to break out of that that pattern that, you know, that the ego is laying its roots deep in those patterns and to step off of that, you know, that wheel that we were talking about, those hamsters that they run in the wheel. It may yes. take it may take a few times. I know in personal experience, I know even blowing bubbles. Go out and get a little bubble blower, blow some bubbles, 
is fun and and it's it's something that you could start with you could start small and you don't have to think all the time i i believe it's important to point out as well we are in this there's a big fat lie it, that we have to think all the time <laughs> and we don't we feel, don't you feel. don't have you, you can just be happy and be in your heart put on some music you know and and get out of your head and you don't have to think all the time promise i i promise you don't have to think all the nothing is going to happen to you now ego will tell you something else you know i got to think about this i got these deadlines i got to da 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 you know and the chatterbox test it test yourself you know do a 10 minute hit the off button and don't think for 10 minutes and and just enjoy and be a kid and play and use some of these ideas that we've presented here because they're so much fun it's it's going to be something where where you're going to want more and more of that that type of play that is has absolutely nothing to do with achieving a goal or what's the point of this or any of that it's just it's got a a quality to it that you're going to want more and more and you're going to see that that's it's going to be a feeling that you feel it's yeah. like oh, oh yeah yeah, like a kid. Hang around some children and, yes. and it'll rub off on you, as Sarah said. Yeah, be, be with the kids. Yes. I would say don't think your thoughts. You, know, if it, you can feel your thoughts, but don't think Ooh. them. Because, you know, our thoughts, it, they're going to go through your head all the time. There's always a dialogue going on in my head. But when I switch off from what those thoughts are, it's like a little movie playing, and sometimes it could be several movies playing, intertwining the scenes. And every mm. now and again, a little thought will pop in and go, oh, well, that's an interesting scene. And, uh, mm. and then switching off to what does it mean? Is it trying to tell me something? Am I meant to yeah. do anything with it? You know, it's <laughs> just like, you know, you're just taking, you know, a, um, a few a journey through the thoughts without any attachment to what the thoughts are. So don't think them, just allow them to be. And if there's something that's really that you're meant to learn from those thoughts, then the, the feeling of that thought will come to you. Oh, that really, I felt that. What does it really mean? What, that's really woken me up. I've got, to, I've got to pay attention to this thought. Now you've actually got some guidance so that that thought is important. But switching off from the random thoughts, just letting it flow like the wind out there in the breeze. And, you know, you're busy spectating it, but stop thinking them. Because that's how you get caught up in the, in the spinning wheel constantly. Let's... Indeed. When we, when we talk about thoughts... Um creating the opportunity for um, the wisdom of our heart to show up in our thoughts. Uh, so often we'll be doing something else. Our mind will be busy doing something else. We're unloading the groceries from the car. We're in the shower. And and this thought will pop in our head. And, you know, it's like uh, uh, learn to play the piano. And and it the very next thought will take it up in our head and start to rationalize the thought we just had. You know, well, I can't play that. I don't even have access to piano. I'm I have two left hands, <laughs> and and our ego, you know, uh, bitch slaps it back into oblivion. Mm -hmm. It's like throwing socks into a a, a ceiling fan. Nothing mm -hmm. sticks. Yeah. So, so if you want to kick your own ass, get a get like a half a dozen post-it notes and put them on your bed stand and put them in your car and put them by the kitchen sink and put them in the bathroom and learn to recognize when the thought didn't come from your ego when the thought just pops in your head and the powerful thing to do is the moment you have that thought go back to school start writing that book stop what you're doing and don't have another thought write down that thought verbatim don't edit it your ego mm -hmm. is just going to bugger it up write down the thought verbatim and now you've captured it mm. and your ego can bitch slap it all you want but there it is in ink yes yeah. and over time what you're going to notice in two weeks four weeks six weeks a couple of months is you're going to start getting a stream of thoughts and this is your heart wisdom showing up in your everyday life and now your heart has some say, your heart has some sway about how your day goes. And your ego has some tangible, literally tangible 
divine wisdom from your higher self in physical form. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the physical form, as you say, Les, is when you have written it down with your own hand. That is powerful. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, a statement in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, when I write, very often I have no idea what I'm going to write. You know, it might be, okay, this has been brought to my attention and the fingers hit the keyboard and I let it just come out. And then, you know, the, the editing, the rearranging, all of that can come afterwards. And then it's reading it back and understanding what that perception was. You know, I'm, I'm always surprised when I read my stuff back of what it means to me. I didn't write what I mean. Mm. I wrote what I felt to discover what I mean. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. That's a form of channeling, you know, <laughs> FYI. Yes. I, I have <laughs> I <know>. to say. <laughs> and we can all do it, right? We can yeah, all do and it. And we all do it every day. Yeah, I just, just finished up. Um, I just want to put this in there. I, I finished up a channeling course that's on our website with Othella to, to really debunk and demystify this thing we call channeling. Mm -hmm. And you can call it something else if you want to. Everyone does it every day. And children do it and, oh, and you good learn a lot from yeah. yes very good at it Ex exactly and it will light up your life and and help you to to get out of those 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 darker pattern formations the the, the stagnant energy that that is in the conditioned past and, and of ego and help you to then to receive these these divine writings, you know, that Sarah that you're talking about, it, like, it just flows out yes. of you. It just flies right out of you. And, and the creative ideas, or if, if we're talking about solutions, such as in business, you know, and I'm talking like wealth, abundance, you know, goal achievement as far so, and so far as uh, financial goals is concerned, these things do not come from the head. You're not going to yes. get there through ego, through, through the egoic mind that keeps you in that analytical, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to force a solution. I'm going to. I need to know. Da 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 da. And that that part of us, it it can't come from there. The the best of the best solutions then flow from this creative heart space as we're channeling, and and we we do it every day. We can tap into that. It's just a matter of finding the best way that we we channel. And the, yeah. for everyone, it's going to look different, but it's. I'll tell you one thing. It feels great. Feels great. That's yeah, it, one indic. Yeah, it's one indicator that you're that you're in, on the right track. Is if it feels good. Absolutely. Now that this saying here that it says, "Don't push through, flow through." Ah. Oh. We're always mm. trying to push through the problem. I got to push through this. No, you don't. You know, you're not giving birth right now. You know, you haven't gone in even to labor. Flow, all right? Flow through it. Just go with the vibration. Go with the flow. Step out, as you said, the ego. Trust the feeling. Trust, just trust whatever comes into your head of those wonderful spasmodic thoughts and that you say to write down and let yourself flow through it. Where you need to go, what you need to understand, what the real solution is will come to you. But if you're pushing through it, I've got to know right now, you're missing mm. the point and you're never going to get to what you really need to know. Les? It's like the ant and the giraffe in that the ant is the ego and it's down in the grass and all it sees is what's temporally within the next few hours or few days or few weeks. And the giraffe is up high like your higher self, like mm. your soul, and it can see every th all the potentials of your future. Mm. And when the ant can communicate with the giraffe and say, you know, what the hell, um, <laughs> what, what, what's my best intention of this moment? And the giraffe's like, why the hell are you pushing on that log? You don't even want to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. Do a 180 and go the other way. As you start to capture the inspiration of your heart and your soul, a much higher wisdom starts showing up in your everyday life. And we talked about earlier about the expansion of your potential, your expansion of your relationship with the field of miracles that exists in this moment, your expansion of consciousness in the 5D space where we have a completely new experience with 
quote, reality, that higher wisdom already knows how to operate in 5D space and your ego doesn't. Right. And so the more you create a bigger portal for this higher wisdom that is an inherently you, when you create a portal for that to show up in your everyday thoughts, feelings, choices, and the actions, you can do a 180 when you're headed the wrong way. It, it's like you're driving on out across the desert, not on the road, you're going cross country, there's a brick on the gas pedal and you've fell in the, fallen asleep and you've been mowing down cactus for years. <laughs> <laughs> and your heart and your soul's like, uh, you know, there's asphalt, if you just start turning left a little bit, just a little bit, you turn that wheel just a little bit and after a while your ego pulls the steering wheel off and hands it up to your soul, it's like, hell, I don't even want to drive, I suck at driving. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. and, and and you surrender that everyday guidance to your heart and your soul, then then the the pacing of change in your life accelerates and it and it moves you towards congruency, towards harmony, towards authenticity of who you are. And and when your ego can understand the exquisite value of following that higher wisdom, your ego's off the hook. Yeah. Your ego's off the hook. Yes. You don't have to be tired anymore. You don't have to <sighs> yes. figure all this crap out anymore. No. Right. You're safe. Yes. Exactly. And, you know, and whatever happens, it, it just is. You know, why did this happen to me? Why this? Why that? And it's like, it just is. You know, sometimes it's that interrupter. Sometimes it's that take a pause. Some take a deep breath. You know, sometimes just shit happens, you know, and, and stop trying to dissect it. Flush it down the drain and move on, right? And it's, you know, it's understanding what is important to know in the now and what really is not serving you or bogging you down. And it's if we're willing to trust that beautiful highway of life, and let the spirit guide us, let the soul take us where we need to go, let our heart be in it, we'll never go wrong. We may take some bizarre roads and even end up in some bizarre places, but even that's got a reason. And it's, you know, understanding that reason. Don't, well, what am I here for? Don't ask that. Feel it. Right? Feel your surroundings. Feel what you're here for. You'll understand what you're here for. And sometimes it's just to take a break before you continue your journey. But we've really got to stop over-intellectualizing everything and start trusting that divine intellect that simply is in the moment, in the now, the gift of the present. And, you know, I'm going to point out to something that you see in sports. There is a line, Right? There is a line, and on one side of it is life, universe, you know, this, this beautiful expanded consciousness, all that is, the maker and mover of life. And then on the other side, we have the ego, our, our ego personality, and we're here in this, in this physical existence that we've chosen. We, we chose to come into the physical so that we could come to school, and we could play, and we could create. If we've crossed the line... And you try to do universe's job, you've crossed the line. And for in sports, you know, if we're looking at sports, there's penalties for that. There's things that happen because of that. It's it's just it's the way the game is played. If you sense that you've crossed the line, you'll know it because as Les you pointed out, that is beautiful imagery right there. It'll feel like you have been with the brick on the gas pedal going through cactuses and all kinds of and off on this dirt road. I mean, my goodness, that's going to feel, it's going to feel so great when you find your way on your side of the court and, and you know that there's a line and you don't have to know the hows. You don't have to worry about how to figure the quote unquote crap as less. You just, I love this, these words. This is great. It's so real. You don't have to figure the crap out. That's not your job. It's not your place anymore. And you can pass it off and rest and relax. And, and universe has got you. And you, you can just say it to yourself. Write up some affirmations, affirmations. Um, you know, we, we mentioned the sticky notes, which is a great exercise. Love that. To remind yourself that you're safe. Universe has got your back. Write it down. I can relax into my creative process an ego can let the reins go, and you'll feel it in the body. It's going to feel great. 
um, it, it sure beats live in the, in the opposite way. I, yeah. I, I know that from experience. We could suffer all day long, right? And ego would eat that up like the Frosted Flakes. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but we don't have to, and we can choose a, a higher, we're stepping into 5D anyway, so we can choose to, to, to be intentional with this, to enjoy it. And when we find ego popping up to, to try to convince us you know, that, that suffering might be the way or that you know, it's going to figure things out, we can simply say hi to it, give it a high five, and then reel it back and say, I've crossed, you know, I'm not crossing the line. I've crossed the line here. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let go and let go with the flow. Go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just say let go and let God. Yeah, I think, yeah. You know, that's yeah. one way of saying it. And we, we are doing it. There are so many humans on the planet now that are awakened yes. to this. This yes. is exciting. This is an exciting, vibrant time to be alive. And this is, you know, the point, I think, the, of the journey here right now. Just another in, a little um, pennant here. You know, have a pen and paper by your bedside. The amount of things that are going to be inspirational in the night, you know, you think you need to get up for a pee break, but really what it is, there's a little affirmation in your head, write it down. Um, <laughs> and then tomorrow you'll look at it and go, oh, well, that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, and, but, you know, a lot comes to you in the night, so make sure you have a pen and paper or recorder or something by your bed. But, you know, this is really what we're talking about at the present moment is, choose to be in the now living your full potential because this is the year of action where we need to step up so you know this is the time of our own empowerment it's a time where we you know uh, understanding that if we do step into that now step into our own divine presence and empower and embody here what we're here for um get out there and spend it spend our action get into action we are really going to see because everything cosmically is aligned this year for us to step into that action and really reap the harvest of the seeds that we've sown for the last few years and it really could be a very abundant year Um, yes it is and it's so it's a year that if we want to be a part of that abundance we really do have to step up and get ready to plow that field and share (laughs) that abundance with everyone else so um So, you know, this is, this is it, isn't it? It's now. Mm. Come on, folks. You can do it. Put a, you know, the, the, the cosmic kick up the butt is there to say to you, come on, get up and dance. You know, play some music. We need you. We need your exuberance. We need your energy. We need your enthusiasm. We need your creativity. We need your presence. Mm. Step up because this is the time that it counts. There are no more excuses. There's only really mm. one choice, and that is to step into action. So while we wind up here, um, I'd like you both to just address that, stepping into action, and, uh, and also to let everybody know how they can get hold of you. So Les, I'll go over to you first. Like I said in the beginning, what an exciting time to be alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can be the vehicles of unconditional love conveying through our own persona, and that feels so electric when that happens. That, that the love that we exude is a transformational elixir of our human paradigm. This next chapter is all about new humans, new human beings recognizing their divinity, their sovereignty, their dominion, and then showing up with the inspiration of their own heart and their soul. When, when you get good at that, you won't go back to anything else because it, will, it, it won't compare. For myself, I created New Human Living as a platform to help people recognize the exquisite divine potentials that exist in each one of us. NewHumanLiving.com is is a place you can go. An easy thing to do is sign up for the newsletter, and you get my yakage in your ear every <laughs> every week. Yeah. And I'm in love with you. I'm in love with mm. with our human potential. Yes. yes. And Ooh. and in my last book, Citizen King: The New Age of Power, I teach your ego. I teach your ego how to embody the divine potential of of the inspiration of your heart and your soul. It it's not an obvious thing how to embody the enormous power of our divinity. A new mm-hmm. human uh Susan King, the New Age of Power, teaches your ego the exquisite excitement, the fun that awaits you when you allow yourself to embody 
the inherently divine power that you are just by who you are. So it's it's been such a fun episode with you too. Would you also would you also let people know about your radio show, Love, and when when it's on and how they can tune in? Indeed, uh, at newhumanliving.com, there's a radio tab. Every week, Wednesday at 7 p.m., we go live with movers and shakers in our human potential. We just did our 200th episode Wonderful. last night. Oh, congratulations! And it was uh, it, I did an episode called "The Power of Human Consciousness," mm. and and we talk about the 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 divine potential of this human story, this human personification. So um, it goes through Blog Talk Radio, but it's the New Human Living Radio Show, and um, it's all the shows are in the archives. So those are great to dial up when you're commuting to work or mm-hmm. you're going to catch a plane flight. It, it's always my pleasure to bring you powerful conversation to awaken the inherent power in you. Exactly. And that is 7, uh, which time, love? 7 p.m. Mountain. Mountain time, folks. On, okay. on Wednesday nights. Right. So please do tune in. As I said, I had the honor of being on, on one of his shows. And, you know, if you really want to have... Um, you know, call it this. The, I call all of these shows the Orchard of Wisdom, ready for the picking. And whether they're old or new, it doesn't matter. Wisdom never dies. Events or tools may change, but wisdom never dies. So go back and listen to some of those archive shows of lessons, because I promise you there'll be something there that you need to know. Um, mm-hmm. Christina, you're closing. Yes. I want to say first, I, I'm filled with gratitude. I say this a lot, and I, I just, I mean it deeply. Is I'm very honored. I'm very honored at this moment to, to be alive on the planet and to be sharing in this collective energy, this electrifying energy with both of you, Les and Sarah. So thank you for that. And, and like Les, I, I have this, this wonderful interactive website with Athella, who is an ascended master. She's from a, a different dimension. She, she is the giraffe, uh, the one that can see things from a different <laughs> <Yes>. perspective. <laughs> yeah, I love that analogy. <laughs> I, I love, I love that, that, that scene that you walked us through last. Thank you for that. And Athella at athella.org, she has these beautiful, if you sign up for our uh, free products, Right there's meditations there. There's free material. There's uh, beautiful information there about Antarctica, what's happening there, and mm. the dolphins. Um, this is all great information. But th- the power, though, that's backed behind the information is this silence, moving beyond the words that we can't really describe. And and I want to invite everyone to be a part of that and to to come and join our circle, uh, Athela's energy or the energy that we know is Othella is an uplifter in its own right and can bring you back to your own channeling and that's that's really her goal for all beings is that we are coming into our upgraded human there is a book that I've just completed and it's and I've done it with Othella's help it's called the upgraded human and to to help us to have a little bit of education as we move into 5d a little bit of of guidance is that we are stepping into an upgraded way and one of the key features of this is is channeling in our own way so that we can tap into our divine self we can learn how to channel how to harness and and move away from these old uh, ego parts and she does that through an online course we have that you know how to channel course you can get the first part of it for free and also what Othella does, besides live events, and, and we open up our time for private sessions, like we're, you know, Skype sessions, and that's all wonderful too. And if you're finding, though, that you really want to go on an adventure, I would, I would welcome you all to come to our retreats, which is a way for you to hit the off button and to pierce some of those old paradigms and, and bring your children, bring your family, bring your children. Um, we, we have a donate button right now. We have uh-huh. a philanthropy funding for for families and their children to come to the Yucatan Peninsula and be at the Gulf of Mexico and explore our caves and pyramids and sacred sites with Othella and learning about the higher guidance that you have all around you. And there's nothing outside of yourself. It's really all designed for one thing is to unlock what you have on the inside already. You already have everything that you need. 
So I'm, I'm humbled. I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful, Sarah and Les. This has been over, overflowing, bursting at the seams <laughs> with light and energy. Thank you so much, both of you. And just remember, folks, the Thela is um, A-T-H-E-L-L-A dot org, um, just in case you uh, don't know how to spell it. So, And, you know, here on, on Self-Discovery Radio, I'm inviting you to come and look at the community. Just look at the community button up the top here. As you know, I recently moved to Toronto to um, pursue the further uh, advancement of the radio station and its meaning. And, you know, we're now going to be giving voice to the homeless, um, uh, to refugees. I want to have a children channel where children are actually speaking to us because there's so much to learn from them and we're expanding on our voice we're also expanding into books and you are also going to be seeing a service directory of all the wonderful people and their services of what they do here that we've interviewed on selfdiscoveryradio.com so come and check out the community because i invite anybody and everybody to be a part of it because this is what it's about the global community of love, of kindness, of of celebration, of support for one another. Because when we do celebrate our awesomeness, our wonderfulness, our, our sovereignty, uh, of our supremeness that lies within us, then we actually truly actually understand what we're really here for. You know, that old paradigm, you know, what's life all about? It's about living, folks. It's about living and loving and sharing and celebrating and joy and exploring. It's about all of it. So get out there and start embracing it because when you do, you become the energy that this world seeks, that we all seek. You become exuberant and we want to tap into your energy and it just keeps expanding out. We can't stop us. We're here very much on the flow, and uh, this is the time of action, and this is the time when you're going to see that fifth dimension. It's got some surprises for us, hasn't it, folks? (laughs) (laughs) And again, we don't know what it is because we're too busy living in the now, but we know something good's coming. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Well, thank you both very much for being with me here. Delight to have you back on the air with us again, Les. Yes, thank you so much, Les. Beautiful energy. Well, thank you both. I, I, it's such an honor and a, a privilege to spend this time with you two. You, you both just exude excitement and passion, and it's been such a delight spending this time with you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Christina, love doing this with you every week. You know, it's always a wonderful energy boost. You can feel the toes tapping. uh, Exactly. I feel like a kid going down a slide right now. (laughs) I want to go throw snowballs, except for all the snow is now frozen. But yeah, I'm I'm throwing proverbial snowballs out there. So. (laughs) Don't forget and get out and live, folks. So. Um, thanks very much everybody for being with us don't forget to share the show listen to it with friends and family Uh, lift someone's spirit and understand that is what it's about lifting each other's spirit Um, everybody's welcome in the fifth dimension okay you've just got to be willing to tap into yourself because you are that beautiful energy that we seek so until next time folks I wish you all the love and light in the world bye for now Mm -hmm.